Hello! It is an exciting day here on my channel because we're going to be sending an ocean surface base to Leif in one launch. This has been requested multiple times and I've been wanting to do it for a while as well and we're going to be making it single launch partly because it's a cool thing to witness but mostly due to extreme laziness. So here we are ascending with a set of boosters consisting of Vector and Mammoth engines which are technically just a cluster of four Vector engines. I went with vectors due to their high thrust and high gimbal range, which, given the incredibly poor aerodynamic stability of this rocket, are a godsend for keeping us on a course without flipping over. Uh, you'll probably see me fighting uh, to keep the things straight as we ascend through the atmosphere. You may be wondering at this point, Matt, you wondrous warlock, why not simply encase the payload in a fairing? And that's a good question. Unfortunately, even the largest fairing in the game does not permit payloads as wide as this. Obviously we can tweak a few values here and there or install some mods to get around the issue but for the sake of keeping things as close to stock as possible and as intended by the devs, I just went fairingless. I may make a small series of this base by sending over a submarine and possibly an electric jet or helicopter using stock propellers uh, in future videos to further increase the capabilities of this base. Right now it comes equipped with a small submarine module that can just simply dive straight down or float straight back up in addition to a submerged observation pod and a nice rooftop terrace loaded with lots of science kit. As always, if you would like to download this craft for yourself, then there is a link in the description for you to obtain the craft file, as well as a few links to other things like my Expedition Eve series, which is, I am going to make the next episode, I just wanted to do something else first. So there was the 60 seat ELU SSTO mission I did uh, last week, and then this week I was doing the lathe one, but next week, Hopefully, if all goes to plan, I will m upload Expedition Eve part 7. I think it's part 7 anyway. Anyway, here we are, just circularizing. I think I pronounced that right. Uh, with the Penta Vector configuration I have there, and we can just detach that boost now. We could have put a probe core in there just to deorbit it, but it uh, eh, doesn't really matter too much in Kerbal Space Program. So we begin the main part of our journey in LKO, there go the uh, very large solar panels by the way, they'll just provide us with a bit of power. En route we also have our communications array on there which will extend uh, at some point just so we can keep in contact with the KSC because ComNet is enabled. But here we are just plotting our course for Joule. Due to the appalling thrust provided by the nuclear engines we will make our burn in three stages. The first will raise our apoapsis to just below the MUN level and then we'll go around the orbit again and burn to just beyond Minmus but still within Kerbin's SOI and then loop around one final time to get ourselves all the way up to Joule. All of these burns will be performed at periapsis or at least beginning and ending a few minutes either side of periapsis in order to maximise our efficiency in accordance with the Oberth effect which is a principle stating that burning a rocket's engines at higher speeds generates greater mechanical energy than use at lower speeds and the fastest point in any orbit is at periapsis therefore the most efficient point to do any burn is at periapsis. Oh, just hit the microphone there to uh, uh, some finish off that thought process but uh, there goes our penultimate burn uh, two of three and getting ourselves all the way up to Minmus orbit or just beyond Minmus orbit that will make our final burn uh, to extend that apoapsis and get a dual encounter as you can see I'd kind of set up so we were at a dual transfer window and um, there are a few mods uh, or websites you can do this just uh, google Kerbal uh, Kerbal Space Program Transfer Window Planner. Uh, there's a mod that adds a thing into the game that tells you at what year you need to fast forward to to get a window. Or sometimes I just like to brute force it to keep time warping until an encounter appears. <laughs> Either way, here we are doing our final burn now with our um, nuclear engines and we're just keeping an eye on that top tank there because we're going to just detach that once it's empty in order to save a bit of weight even though this thing has way too much fuel for what we need. I just kind of slapped a load of liquid fuel on and just said, ah, oh, that will be enough. I think if I was, if I'd, I, I literally only have about a day from, I, I started recording this on Friday and I need to have the mission done and edited by Saturday. So I didn't really have much time. So I just decided to stick on what I knew was way too much liquid fuel tanks, but I knew it would work. And I mean, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room if you do choose to download this craft file for yourself because it has a lot of excess fuel. 
But here we are, leaving with 2,501 meters per second of delta V, according to Kerbal Engineer. That's those readouts at the top. I've finally figured out how to tweak the GUI scale so you guys can actually see how much delta V that's there. This that's is more useful for doing um, SSTO videos. Uh, anyway, just talking quickly about Joule. You can capture into orbit in one of three ways. The first way is the obvious burning at dual periapsis and slowing ourselves down to the point where our apapsis is brought within dual sphere of influence. The second option and the preferred method prior to re-entry heat being implemented into KSP is aero braking in Joule's atmosphere, but these days this generates a vast amount of heat and so isn't very practical. The final approach and the one you're seeing now and the one that I would strongly recommend is to use a gravity assist from either Tylo or Lathe to bring your speed down sufficiently to capture into dual orbit for very, very minimal fuel expenditure. This process is called a gravity assist and there are lots of resources about what this is and how this phenomenon works and both on both YouTube and simple Google searches if you wish to know more. But uh, I did a video uh, last week, 60 seat Kerbal SSTO to ELU, obviously it's a Kerbal SSTO, they use a lot of gravity assists because uh, ELU would normally take about 8,500 meters per second of delta V to get to the surface and back. This SSD only had 5,000. This is all from LKO, so I had to get creative with doing dual assists, EVE assists, Kerbin assists, Tylo assists, to get myself, sort of bounce myself in between the planets and get around for not as much fuel expenditure as I would otherwise need. Anyway, we're ram getting a bit rambly and off topic here. Here we are getting our encounter with Lathe setting up. As you can see, it's going to be a very, very low powered burn. 8.7 meters per second to be precise. We could probably do better if we were... Oh, look at that. <laughs> Wasn't focusing on the ship and so I accidentally time warped. But um, luckily I managed to stop the time warp at pretty much the exact right spot. Only an hour overshooting or an hour and a half overshooting. So... Here we are doing our, bringing our periapsis in, and um, we'll be going slow enough, uh, especially since we've got these massive inflatable heat shields, to just re-enter the atmosphere, well, enter the atmosphere, I guess, for the, without needing to do any engine braking. That's why I brought this fuel, because I wasn't quite sure if I'd be able to just go straight into a lathe entry. I didn't know if I might have to circularize first to bring my initial entry speed down to the point where I wouldn't overheat, but luckily, we were fine. That's because we've got these massive inflatable heat shields, which did a very good job of keeping us safe. Uh, a lot of people, oh, by the way, we're just ra lowering our periapsis to about 22 kilometers. Late atmosphere um, begins at 50 kilometers, so as long as it's sort of below 40, we should be all right. But there we are, just inflating those heat shields there with an action group, and we're going to go ahead and tell us and point ourselves retrograde. You may notice there in the very middle of that battery, that's the circle right in the middle, you can see that small octagonal probe core. That's just to allow me to control the ship from the center, basically. It's just a control point. So if you do download this, make sure you right click that and click control from here. And here we are just entering the atmosphere. Now, a lot of people complain that their rockets always flip when they enter the atmosphere, and that's because they're just. They're too top heavy basically, they're too long. Luckily this thing is very short and wide so it doesn't have a tendency to flip. But my EVE rockets, um, well the ones that have to return from EVE, very often have a tendency to flip. So I would often either had a tail fin built into it or a second heat shield at the other end of the ship to try and keep the thing aerodynamically balanced. But uh, this thing was fine. So uh, we can just go ahead and toggle the action group to detach those uh, heat shields. And it's not gone well, it, everything has blown up uh, and it's all ended in disaster. So uh, thank you for watching this video. There are links on screen for, um, we've got a 40 seat Kerbal SST on the left and Jewel 5 on the right. And that's not actually how I'm ending this video, don't worry. Uh, in fact, we can go ahead and reload our quick save that we made a minute ago. Uh, you can make multiple quick saves and multiple quick loads by pressing Alt F5 and Alt F9. I highly recommend that for more complicated missions. Not that this is a particularly complex mission, but I don't know what I'm really doing here but uh we're gonna get down into the thicker atmosphere so we're going a little bit slower and then we're gonna start trying to f i would i think i was just trying to flip myself over to get a more clean separation but in the end it just comes out i just basically keep, keep keep quick loading until it separates without destroying everything so there we go and that was beautiful so we can just uh yeah so press f3 just to make sure that nothing critical exploded but it looks like this thing is all in one piece which is great. Now we have our parachutes, which aren't going to provide enough um, slowing down force. That's probably a better term there. Deceleration, that's what we needed. Uh, so we've got a few aerospike engines just to slow us down for touchdowns. There we go. 
just doing some small control burns and there we go beautiful now we've got those structural things at the bottom to provide a bit of buoyancy 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 and there we go time warp to daytime and there we go we can extend our communications tower and extend our solar panels and look at that obviously some of you might be asking at this point what the ocean mod is that's the scatterer mod that's why you get those cool ocean waves even though they are purely visual as you can see this thing isn't being bounced about like you would expect if it was in an ocean like that so we can get our kerbal on eva to do some science and look at that we've got kind of a nice little control board there with those aerials either side we can open up the covers for the mystery goo units and the science juniors over there uh, just to the right and we can even take the plunge and go there we go 10 out of 10 from me there and if you can see you might have just caught it just there there is that submersible vessel so we can just board the ladder and just transfer our kerbal there but obviously once that thing is detached we won't be able to transfer to it However, Kerbals can use that sort of submerged ladder to climb down below the surface and board the submarine that way. So, um, well, that was the end of that thought process, really. So we can detach it and down it goes. So this thing has uh, 300 units of ore stashed away in that service bay. So it will just sink and we can do some science on the ocean floor of Leith. Uh, this is going to take a while to sink, I think, so we can just fast forward to that. And here we are coming to the door, so we can just open the doors quickly to uh, slow ourselves down. That kind of made that weird splashing glitch, but, uh, well, there we are. We can do a nice zoom in through the water. I mean, it, it does get a little bit glitchy, but uh, I think that was turned out pretty nicely. So we can actually perform a crew report and see if we can learn anything. That's right, this video was sponsored by LootCrate.com! Get a discount, 10% off, LootCrate.com slash Matt. Get a, a box in the post with loot in it. There is an unboxing at the end of this video. Stay tuned. Yeah, LootCrate.com slash Matt every time, 100 times, dot com slash Matt. Okay, I think I pretty much nailed that uh, sponsorship, so um, let's just move swiftly on i think i kept it i like to keep my sponsorship subtle you know i don't like them to intrude on the overall flow of the video so um yeah, i hope you appreciate that so uh, anyway moving swiftly on we there is an interesting quirk with the service bays in that when you open the doors it changes the buoyancy and so we will just now float to the surface which is nice and if we want to sink again we just close the surface bay uh, we can just it, it, it rises at a very, very, very slow rate, so we'll just fast forward to the surface again. And here we are coming up to the surface, and you can see there's that uh, underwater observation pod there. Unfortunately, I forgot to disable the flag, so it does say Lathe Base 1 upside down on there. But uh, other than that, not a big deal. But you can see how if we can just climb down this ladder, you can board the submarine again. Despite it not actually being docked to the ocean base anymore, so there are no worries there. So we can just climb up and board and that pretty much wraps this video up. We can do a few beauty shots, I guess, of the various bits and views. This right here is meant to represent a hydroponics garden. It's just a bunch of the SAS wheels and those are the only green stock components. So I just kind of use them as a kind of faux hydroponics garden. So there's that. But uh, yeah, look at Jewel there looming on the horizon. Um, yeah, other than that, I think that's, well, that's pretty much it. So now I guess it's that moment that you've all been waiting for. And that is, of course, the unboxing! Hi, guys. I don't want, I can't, I don't want this to go on too long, like a ridiculous amount of time. So let's have a look. Oh, wrong way up. Good start. Let's start, we begin with a t-shirt. It looks like a Resident Evil t-shirt but they've obviously printed the design on upside down they've even made it upside down look they've put the sleeves at the bottom look at that there we go resident evil 7 nice right um this is a piece of card telling you that you can unfold the box and make it into a portal crate excellent here we have this looks like mega man in insignia should think i should angle this camera up a bit oh now you can see my horrible unmade bed we have a a bobblehead thing. A stand. That's kind of whoop. So uh, that's kind of cool, I guess. So let's just pop that there. Right. What else we got? We have 
a portal thing. And it looks like a portal tie. That's beautiful. It's got like little, um, little companion cubes on it. Right, we also have a pin badge, as always. There it is, on there. So obviously the theme is mad science, and what better way to end that than with a Psychonauts box, which I assume has something in it. Ah, oh, goggles! Wow, these actually feel quite substantial. It's kind of neat, isn't it? Ooh! These are cool. I like these. And then of course we have the poster. It's a generic Gamer Girl thing, so... That's cool. I feel like I'd rather have had a portal poster, if I'm honest, but I understand that they try, they like to keep their posters generic, so um, that's cool, I suppose. Beautiful. Uh, so if you guys would like to be as cool as I look, then um, get the new look. The new, this is the Matt uh, uh summer look. So um, get yours now at uh, www www.lootcrate.com slash map get 10% off you get a loot crate every month and you get stuff in it like this in fact this exact stuff if you get it right now so this is this, this is kind of cool anyway thank you for watching my video and thank you for watching this thing that came afterwards I'm just gonna let it hang